Hey, ninth graders. My name is Ethan, and I'm a junior who works with Mr. Gibney as a teacher assistant. And over the past um, couple weeks, I've been creating this eutrophication lab for you guys. And this is a short presentation about the eutrophication lab that you will be doing over the next few weeks. Eutrophication comes from the Greek words eu, meaning well or good, and troph, which means to nourish. Essentially, eutrophication is a process that involves the overnourishment of a body of water, meaning there is a sudden increase in the amount of nutrients in the water, typically leaving the water with more nutrients than it will naturally have. The process of eutrophication usually occurs when fertilizers are carried in water runoff from farmland and enter a body of water, such as a lake or a pond or a beachfront. Um, fertilizers can be artificial, as is shown in this picture, or they can be natural, such as manure from cows or other animals. And essentially what happens is these fertilizers are put in large quantities onto farmland. And uh, this farmland, when it rains, leaves runoff that contains a lot of the fertilizers that were placed onto the crops, which then runs into ponds or other bodies of water causing an overnourishment of the body of water. Fertilizers are high in nutrients like nitrates and phosphates, so when they enter a body of water, algae that feed on the nutrients grows rapidly. While algal blooms are a natural occurrence, algal blooms that are too expansive cause the dissolved oxygen content of a body of water to decrease, and sometimes can become toxic to almost any organism. In order to understand eutrophication, you need to understand what an ecosystem is, because eutrophication is harmful mainly because it affects the stability of an aquatic ecosystem. As is written on the slide, an ecosystem consists of the interactions among organisms and with their physical environment. This could mean, for example, <clears throat> excuse me, the relationship between a predator and its prey, which would be an example of an organism to organism interaction or it could be the relationship between a fish and the water in which it lives, which would be an interaction between an organism and the physical environment of the ecosystem. Ecosystems come in many different forms and sizes, and the physical attributes of ecosystems are significant factors when it comes to the type of organisms that are a part of them. This is especially important when an external factor influences the change in, the, in an ecosystem. In our case, this is the increase in the amount of nutrients in a sample of water. Changes can affect the stability of the ecosystem and can sometimes seriously damage the organisms by live with, that live within, even killing off some of the organisms that live in such an ecosystem. Here are two examples of algal blooms that are significant to large populations of people. The first six photos that you see on the left here are aerial views, meaning they were taken from the sky, of Lake Erie in the United States. You can see the change in the amount of algae over time as it, the pictures progress from A to F. Um, the photos show the growth, growth of an algal bloom that residents on, the lake, on Lake Erie now experience each year. The photo on the right is that of the coast of Qingdao, China, where an algal bloom sweeps in each year from the Yellow Sea. The algae isn't actually harmful at first, and Qingdao residents actually go and swim in the bloom for a short while, but soon the algae become, begins to decompose, producing dangerous toxins that could cause serious harm to people and other organisms. One side effect of these algal blooms is that they cause a depletion in the amount of dissolved oxygen in the water. This happens when algal blooms caused by eutrophication cover the surface of a body of water. Because of this, plants at the bottom cannot get sunlight and are unable to photosynthesize, causing the plants to die and decompose. The decomposed remnants of the plants are composed by bacteria, are consumed by bacteria, which grow rapidly in number and use up a great amount of the dissolved oxygen in the water. Dissolved oxygen, as written here, refers to free non-compound oxygen present in water or other liquids. Dissolved oxygen is an important factor when it comes to the survivability of a body of water and is generally used as an accurate um, measurement of the quality of water. With too little oxygen, organisms are unable to survive. Dissolved oxygen, when measured, is it measured by the quantity of O2 molecules in a sample of water and is usually recorded in milligrams per liter. You will be measuring the dissolved oxygen content of water samples during the experiment using a dissolved oxygen probe to test the amount of dissolved oxygen in each of your beakers, which you can see on this in this picture here 
which is um, when I tried the lab myself, just to figure stuff out for you guys to improve the lab. And um, so the point of this lab is that you will be modeling the process of eutrophication by monitoring the dissolved oxygen content of water samples that have different amounts of nutrients in them. By doing this lab, you will hopefully gain an understanding of not only eutrophication, but ecosystems and how external factors influence their stability as well. This lab will also give you an opportunity con to consider the influences of human activity on ecosystems and the environment in general, and to understand why it is necessary that we, as humans, take responsibility for our impact on the environment. As you go through this lab, think about these questions and consider how, it, how they affect your view of the human interaction with the environment, as well as how the lab enables you to better understand ecosystems. Thank you for listening and enjoy the lab.